Running a server gives you a lot of power and a lot of freedom. You can go and host a website, run a data backup, have a game server, or set up a Jitsi instance and then do all of your video communication on a server that you actually control. And while self-hosting isn't that difficult, there are plenty of reasons why you may not be able to do so. Let's say you don't have extra hardware laying around, so you actually have to go and buy that hardware, which might be outside of your budget. Or let's say you don't have the physical space to actually have another computer. Or maybe you don't want to have your home IP address attached to your website because someone might try to DDoS it or something like that. So for most people, if they want a server, they're probably going to go with a server provider like someone like Linode. And what they'll do is they'll pick one level that does everything they need and then they won't change it. So if you run, say, like a Minecraft server and you're going to have a lot of mods, you'll get like, I don't know, a 10 or a $15 VPS that does everything you need and you just let it burn through money like that. But aside from the time-saving benefit of not having to set up your own server, this is ignoring the main benefit you get from letting someone else deal with the hardware, and that is easy scalability. But what in the world would a home user be doing where they'll need to scale up and down their server? Well, here's an example from a recent stream I had where I had to do exactly that. So whenever I rent a VPS, I always rent the cheapest option. This is what I recommend doing for everyone else out there Usually, this will be something in the range of $5. That's what it is over on Node. So, that's going to give me one CPU core and one gigabyte of RAM. And this is perfectly fine for my web server because not many people use that website. And for a lot of general use cases, this is going to be perfectly fine. But then we streamed Super Tux Cart, and at the absolute peak, we had uh, 30 human players on at the exact same time. And the VPS could barely keep up with that, but me being the crazy person that I am, I decided, hey, let's go and just fill out the rest of the server with AI carts taking us up to 64 players. At that point, the VPS barely functioned, so when we went up to like 128 carts, it basically died straight away. It did play, but it wasn't playable. Now, when you rent a server, most decent server providers are going to list out two prices. You'll have the monthly price and also the hourly price. Now, most of the time, you're going to have that server for the entire month, so you might think that they charge by the month, but that's generally not going to be the case and definitely is not the case for Linode. Linode actually charges by the hour. So what that means is if I only need, say, I don't know, this $160 VPS for four hours, it's not actually going to charge me $160. Instead, it's only going to charge me 96 cents. However, if you just shut down the server, it will keep charging you. So if you stick on this, let's say, uh, $480 tier, and then you go and actually just power off the system and leave it like that for a month, you will get a $480 bill. The reason for this is because it's not actually charging you based on the resources you're using, it charges you based on the resources that you have allocated. The reason for this is because if you have resources allocated to you, they know that at some point you're probably going to use those. And if they go and allocate those to someone else while they're allocated to you just because you've shut down your system, when you go and power up the system, the resources you're actually paying for may not be available. Now, this is where server providers get really, really useful because maybe you do need that really expensive tier, but only in a very short burst. Let's say you're running a game server and you only play on this server I don't know, once a week or twice a week or however many often times a week, but you, you don't play on it all of the time. So you don't actually have a load on the server most of the time that it's running. There's no point buying the expensive VPS and then just wasting money. Or maybe video rendering on your computer just isn't viable, so you'd instead much rather do it on a separate system if you're not going to be rendering all of the time. Do you really need to go and get that really expensive VPS when you can just go and up tier when you actually need it. Or if you have a website and you know there's going to be an influx of users, let's say, I don't know, some massive YouTuber is about to drop a video on it, 
When that happens, then you can go and up tier and handle all of those users visiting. And then when they go away, then you can drop it back down and save yourself a lot of money. Now, I use Linode for all of my servers, so let's see how we do it here. If you go and click on the three dots next to any of your servers, and then click on the resize option, this is going to be used for scaling up and also scaling down. This will list out all of the plans. We've got the dedicated CPU, shared CPU, high memory, and also GPU. Now, if you are scaling up to a bigger shared CPU, it is going to all be done completely automatically. If you want to get a bigger dedicated CPU, I think high memory as well, and also GPU, those are going to require you opening up support tickets just because that hardware may not be available. But most people watching this channel are probably going to be looking at shared CPU. This is for a VPS. So if we want to go and scale up, all we need to do is go and click on a bigger tier. Let's say this one right here. This is 16 gigs of RAM with six cores and 320 gigs of storage. If we go and enter the name of the server, so Brody website, then click resize. It's going to go and resize. And this will take a couple of minutes. It depends on like how big you're actually going. I'm not sure how long it'll be. So I'll just cut back to when that's done. That ended up taking about three or so minutes, and now it's completely done. So if we go and click on this server now, as we can see under the storage section, it now has a much, much larger disk. And this is why resizing the, uh, the VPS downwards can't be done as easily automatically. Now, in my case, I have not added any extra data to this VPS, and I've not added any extra petitions. So, what if I did, though, and what if I had added so much extra data that it went over the amount of data the lower tier I want to go down to actually supports? Is it supposed to just delete data or something like that? Well, that's obviously a no-go because it might delete something you actually need. So instead, what it gets you to do is handle this manually. Also, the way that it makes petitions by default is these two petitions. You have the main EXT4 petition and then also your swap. So if you have extra petitions, it won't know where to actually take the data from to actually go down to a lower tier. So there is two things we need to do. Firstly, go and log onto the VPS and actually make sure you're not using too much data. In my case, I know that I'm not. I have not added anything extra to this system. But if you did, run df-h or some other program to check how much data is being used and then go and delete things. If you have extra petitions, make sure you check how big those petitions actually are. Luckily, we can actually go and modify those over on the interface inside of Linode though, so we don't have to do it from the terminal. Once you've gone and cleared out all of the extra data so you actually aren't using space that you don't actually have access to, what you need to do is go and resize your petitions so they equal or are lower than the tier you want to go to. Because I am showing the web interface, what we need to do is go and power off the VPS, clicking on this button right here. And then once the VPS has powered off, then we can go and resize it with these two buttons right here. Now, this isn't a fault of Linode themselves. This is more of a fault of the entire computing industry using computing units completely wrong for a very long time. So this says we have an EXT4 petition that is 327,168 megabytes and then a swap that is 512 megabytes. Now, that's wrong because they are not actually megabytes. They are mebibytes. There is an important distinction here. Megabytes are... 1,000 to a gigabyte, and then mebibytes are 1,024 to a gibibyte. The reason why this is important is because it's not going to help us do the maths. So I know that if I want to go down to the 25 gigabyte, which is actually gibibyte tier, this needs to be set to 25088, which adds up to 25,600 mebibytes, which is 25 gibibyte. So once that has been resized, then we can go and actually change the tier to a lower one. And this will be done through the same interface that we saw before. So clicking on the three dots, going to resize, and then going over to the section you want. So in my case, shared CPU, selecting the plan you want. So one gigabyte nanode. And then if we go and enter the name of the VPS, it's going to go and resize that for us in the background. And I'll let you know when it's done. 
And now we're back to where we started, ready to do it all over again. One thing I probably should mention is you don't actually have to resize the disc automatically. So going to the resize option, you'll notice that down the bottom here there is this auto resize disc. Now, usually it's going to be automatically selected. If you don't want to have it selected though, and you just want to go and increase the amount of resources you have available, then you can go and do that. The advantage of doing that is then you don't have to go and resize your petitions when you want to go back down to a lower tier. So if you're not going to be using all of that storage anyway, there's no point automatically resizing the disk. The reason why I went and talked about that is because usually that is going to be the default. Throughout this entire process, I have been using Linode. So if you want to go and get yourself $100 free credit when you sign up for a VPS, go to brodyrobertson.xyz slash Linode and sign up today. That will be linked in the description down below, and I'll probably have it shown somewhere on the screen. Obviously, this functionality won't be useful all the time. A lot of use cases, you might actually just want to go up to a higher tier because there's always going to be a baseline of work that needs to be done. If you have a website that gets a lot of traffic, maybe you want to go up to like the $20 tier or something like that. Or if you have a matrix instance running it on a single CPU, you can do it. It just won't work very well. There's cases like that where that is going to occur, but if you do have these burst sort of workloads where you run a game night or you do some rendering or anything like that, definitely consider looking into scaling. That's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon, subscribe, start, and Libera pay linked in the description down below. And if you want $100 free credit on a VPS, link also in the description as well. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>